Good morning, everyone. Today I have another surprise. I received a box from Xilinx, and uh, this is uh, inside of this box there is a development board. This is uh, SP701, I believe, and uh, this board is um, somewhat of somewhat of a high-end uh, development board featuring the uh, high-end, uh, top-of-the-line Spartan 7, uh, which is uh, S100. Now, that's uh, high-end in terms of uh, regular parts before uh, venturing into ultra-scale, which is another level of uh, expensive, let's put it that way. Uh, this is still uh, in the range of uh, being affordable. So... If you look at this board comparing to, let's say, uh, RT A7, you can obviously see the difference. It's uh, quite a difference in, in size of the packaging and the board itself, truth be told, is, uh, it's bigger. Um, something like um, maybe Mini ITX, slightly smaller, I would say. But uh, yeah, here's the box. It's quite nice. I like Xilinx logo. I like the packaging. It seems very professional. And uh, let's give it a go. Let's see inside. So basically, it's very easy to open. I already did this and I played with the board a little bit. So this is not the first time I, I'm, I'm doing unboxing. Inside, on the other side, I won't turn this around, but there is a voucher for um, Vivado license for one year. And then below, there's cables. There's nothing special here aside from cables and power supply. And that's already out. So I won't go much more into details there. And then looking at the board itself. And here it is. So you can see here, hopefully, it's a SP701. This is R1.1. And this is the power supply here. I've set a board into the uh, test mode, so to speak. So it's a zero, one, one, zero. And then if you turn the board on, you'll see these LEDs uh, blinking and start self-test, some sort of self-test. Uh, this one won't light on until the reset. Uh, and these are for these buttons and it's passing everything. I'm seeing this behavior with other uh, customers and owners of the board. Basically, you just press reset, I believe, this button here. And then it will do SPI test successfully as well. So I don't know, I think it's maybe some sort of firmware issue. It's not really a, a problem with the board. So as you can see here, and then again, buttons. It's waiting for us to input test the buttons and then it's done seems like board is uh, fully operational hopefully so that's that uh, so why why even bothering bother with um, s100 for me uh, aside from having ideas for the future and you know using these 400 pins I I would like to attach <clears throat> excuse me, entire Minimig on the on the board itself. Uh, there is this uh, high density connector here called uh, FMC LPC that hopefully I'll be able to use. Um, and unfortunately, all these, I said at the beginning, this chip has 400 pins, but it seems like not all of these pins are attached. I'm, I'm looking at the schematics and it seems like a lot of pins are just floating uh, without being connected. Am I missing something? Are those pins not IO pins? It seems they are. Uh, I don't know why those pins are not used. Uh, even this connector, half of the IO available here potentially is just grounded. So I don't know what's going on. Why is it done this way? Even so, it's quite enough for me to attach CPU here and uh, hopefully S, uh, SRAM and go from there because uh, DDR3 implementation will require some development time time on my side to make sure that uh, Minimic Core can use uh, DDR3. There is a lot of fiddling there. Um, but uh, 
yeah, that will be done. So once that's done, I guess here I can attach only um, CPU and maybe uh, some S7 uh, until I do the migration to FPGA itself or Microblaze and even better, a RISC V core, which um, be even better because it's, it's completely open source. Uh, as someone mentioned, uh, I think that um, Microblaze itself it's not the best approach because after all it is limited to Xilinx parts. So maybe in the future, if you want to use a different part, um, some sort of um, ARM open source ARM core or regularly, uh, readily available uh, ARM core or even better RISC V uh, will do the job the best. So we'll look into that. A lot of development. I think the hardware part will be easy. To be honest, uh, the most difficult part is going to be software, like always. So, but uh, that's how it is. What else we have here? We have, uh, I believe these are gigabit Ethernet ports. I'm not sure, but I think these are gigabit Ethernet ports. Uh, there's connector for display and... Uh, I don't know which one is which. I think this should be display, I think. And this is, this is something else, maybe for cameras, that sort of things. Um, but I'm not quite sure. Don't don't quote me on that. On that, HDMI and chip. We have schematics. This is going directly to FPGA. That's great. I think we will be able to use this for HDMI and maybe kickstart the HDMI development based on this board and all sorts of other stuff. JTAG. Let's see what this is. This is a Sysmon connector. And yeah, that's that's about that. Um, this this part is quite capable, uh, and as I said, it's uh, considered to be high-end Spartan Seven. And uh, we can take a look at the these sheets that I have. So let's find Spartans. Uh, maybe here, next one. There you go. So XC7S100, above 100,000K of LEs, amazing. Slices, flip-flops, this and that, but this is the part that seems most impressive. It's 400 IO pins, which is just amazing. And uh, I think for regular Army Cube, the one that's going to be released first, this Spartan chip is definitely overkill, but I have an idea for the future. Uh, that's why I bought this board. Aside from the ability to attach much more than comparing to uh, those little Digiland boards, uh, obviously much better IO from, from the get-go. I have an idea what to do with this. I think, um, once we have Minimi core ported, uh, use AGA and uh, once I'm done with moving to a new MCU solution and um, adding floppy drive, then I have a, some idea what to do with uh, with all this uh, galore of, of IO. So, I mean, I'm quite happy. Although, as I said, I'm somewhat surprised with the uh, with those uh, floating pins that I, maybe I just don't have understanding of what does that mean and, and why they're floating and maybe there's some sort of limitations that I still don't understand. Maybe I'm misinterpreting the, the schematics, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, one way or another, it's enough to kickstart uh, development and, and help me with transitioning from what we have right now to something that's uh, next gen, I think. So there you go, that's, uh, that's my new S100. I was always very curious about these parts and uh, I think it's, uh, it was quite expensive. The board itself is about $800 US and then there is a shipping and tax and this and that. But uh, I think having this uh, will also help with, um, especially with IO, I think attaching multiple things um, using these uh, expansion ports for, for prototyping will be quite useful to speed up stuff. 
So that's that's about that. Uh, thanks for watching and talk to you soon.